So far, we've placed a lot of emphasis on determining the amount of force on a charged particle that's in an electric field. So we say F is equal to QE. And we've just been calculating a lot of magnitudes. But keep in mind that the force is always in the same direction as the electric field, or at least that's what the force would be on a positive charge. So in other words, if you have a uniform electric field that points to the right, and we place a positive charge, and it's going to experience a force in that exact same direction. Of course, if you were to place a negative charge in that field, it gets a force in exactly opposite the direction. And even if it's not a uniform field, if we've got a dipole, we know what the field lines for a dipole would look like. The same thing, if we were to place a positive charge right here, the local electric field, a line that's tangent to the nearest field line gives us an indication of the direction of the field. And because it's a positive charge, that's also the same as the direction of the force. So we can ask questions like, what's the initial acceleration on the charged particle? And um, Anyway, there we have it. Now we're going to focus, instead of force, focus on the amount of torque that acts, not on a monopole, not on a single charged particle, but on a dipole. And of course, there are plenty of examples of polar molecules. Water is probably the first that comes to mind. So we can model the water molecule in one of a few ways. We can show uh, both hydrogens and the oxygen, how they bond at an angle. And this molecule is free to rotate or even vibrate. So let's say it rotates into this position, maybe a more simplified version of this polar molecule would just show it has a positive and a negative end to it. And we can even simplify that model more and um, show that there's a definite overall length or dimension to that polar molecule. So we'll place an origin at the negative charge and create a vector that represents the length of the molecule. We'll call that vector d. So if we're just interested in um, the length of the molecule as a scalar quantity, we take the absolute value of that vector, and um, we can define a new quantity we call the electric dipole moment. So we're going to give that the symbol p. I'm sorry, that's the same symbol that we also use for momentum only so many letters in the alphabet. So here, P does not stand for momentum as a vector. It stands for electric dipole moment. And it's nothing more than the product of the charge of either pole, the magnitude of the charge of either pole Q, and the length of the molecule D. OK. Well, <clears throat> there's a torque on this molecule if you place it in an electric field. Let's imagine a uniform electric field, shown here uh, with the orange field lines. If we were to place our electric dipole in the field, the positive charge would experience a force that wants to pull it in the direction of the electric field, and the negative charge wants to move opposite the field. So the molecule would want to rotate on its axis so that the positive moves with the field and the negative opposite the field. So that's what we mean when we say there's a torque on a dipole. So here we show the molecule in a particular angle, theta. And the question is, how do we calculate how much torque exactly is on it? Well, there's a, go back to the idea that there's force on charged particles. So we'll use the equation F equals QE. So there's a force that makes the positive charge want to move in the direction of the electric field. The magnitude of that force, of course, is just QE. And there's a force that makes the negative charge want to accelerate opposite the field. And that force and magnitude is also QE. So let's make a frame of reference in which we assume the axis of rotation is at the center of the molecule. 
So if we extend we extend the uh, direction of the vector d, and we can duplicate this angle theta, and we know how we calculate torque, right? Torque is the dot product between lever arm and force. Let's say it's R cross F. So given that the axis of rotation is in the middle of the molecule, then we have a lever arm of D over 2. So there's the vector R, and we've got a force of QE, and then an angle of theta. So in magnitude, this is equal to D over 2 times QE times sine theta, right? Oh, my mistake. How dare I? This is not the dot product between R and F. Torque is absolutely a cross product. I hope you caught my mistake on that one, right? Torque is the cross product between lever arm and force. Anyway, whenever we take a cross product, then sine theta appears, right? Okay, and that's just the torque due to the force on the positive charge. Uh, you're going to have the same amount of torque due to the force on the negative charge, although both of those torques tends to create a clockwise rotation. So these torques do not cancel out. They add up so that the net amount of torque is equal to 2 times d over 2 times qe times sine theta. So the 2s cancel out, and our torque is qe d sine theta. However, we see that there's q and d as part of the product, and we've already defined the electric dipole moment as uh, the scalar q multiplied by the vector d. The magnitude of our electric dipole moment is qd. So the magnitude of our torque can be rewritten as p e sine theta. Or we could think of this another way. There's the negative end. There's the positive end. This is our vector P. This represents the electric field. There's an angle of theta. And so you can use the right-hand rule. And you notice if you were to cross the vector P into the vector E, so to speak, right? If you point the fingers of your right hand in the direction of vector P and rotate, uh, until they're in the direction of vector E, then you get the same sort of clockwise rotation that we're trying to illustrate in this diagram. So I, we can assume that it's equivalent to say that the torque on the dipole as a vector is equal to the cross product of the electric dipole moment and the external electric field that it's placed in. All right. You might also be interested in the potential energy that a dipole has when it sits in a field. So let's imagine our dipole molecule in this orientation. Well, it's not going to rotate any further. It's reached a stable equilibrium if it's in this position. And it's not going to have a net acceleration to the right or to the left because there's just as much force to the left on the negative charge as there is force to the right. So the net force is zero, and in this position, the net torque is also zero. Now, if we were to rotate it here, likewise, the net force is zero, and the net torque is also zero. However, this would be an unstable equilibrium. If it got just slightly disturbed from this orientation, it's going to rotate to the point of lowest potential energy. So we'll just draw it in a particular starting orientation like this. So there we have it. And let's figure out uh, how much work would be done as it rotates from this position back into its position of lowest potential energy, right? into its position of uh, stable equilibrium. So uh, recall now that work is the integral 
of f dot ds. That should be a very familiar definition for work. If you know the analogy between uh, linear equations and rotational equations, you might be able to recall that work then could also be calculated as the integral of torque dot d theta. So we can say work is equal to QED sine theta d theta, or work is equal to QED integral of sine theta d theta. So work is equal to QED cosine theta. And then you should also be familiar with the definition or the concept that the change in potential energy is always equal to negative the work done by a conservative force. Work done by electric fields is always conservative. And so the potential energy, we'll say, is negative QED cosine theta. And I'll leave it up to you to convince yourself that that's the same thing as the dot product. Notice we have the Q and D, right? So that's the magnitude of the electric dipole moment. So uh, the potential energy on the dipole is equal to negative electric dipole moment vector dot product with the external field vector. Thanks for watching.